the time has come for everyone's real faces to be freed. And first up, who wants to see a headless chicken? This is the real Kalechi. Ah, I'm a sexy beast. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's 16 Leo, and welcome back to an episode of Whoa! What did I just watch? On today's episode, we are watching a show called Sexy Beasts, which is the new hit show on Netflix that everyone has been messaging me and asking me to check out, and I caved. I decided to check it out, and yes, I can see why so many people are comparing it to a furry type situation. <clears throat> For those of you who don't know, furries are people who have sex with squirrels. I don't think that's actually true, but that's what my friend told me and I'm going with it. I think uh, the show is actually made with good intention. When I actually looked at it, I was like, oh, okay. This is a show where people dress up in prosthetics to take away their physical appearance. So it's a show that is sort of like the anti-Tinder in a way. Basically what it does is two people are like heavily dressed up in makeup so they cannot see each other's physical appearance. So they have to bond on a either spiritual, mental or like personality level, of course. They go on maybe two dates each and it's one contestant and three other possible love interests. So at the end of the day, the one contestant has to choose one either guy or girl that he or she decides that they want to date. Then they reveal the prosthetics. And that is the moment that really gets to me. Because at first, I was like, this is an amazing show. It puts personality first. Then I watched a little bit of an episode and I saw one of the people reveal themselves. And I was like, oh, I completely forgot this was reality TV. There's nobody there that's going to look like, you know, not too good. Everybody on the show is like unreasonably attractive. They need to put me on the show. They need to put someone who looked like a garbage can on the show and be like, uh, once you remove the prosthetic, instead of the person being like, oh, you were so hot. The person should be like, oh, can you put the prosthetics back on? I need that type of reaction. The fact that they're just hiding hot people under prosthetics suddenly goes from a wholesome show to kind of a, uh, a disingenuous show, sort of. It's sort of like that challenge that Vine had maybe years ago. It was the challenge in which people actually put spots on their face and made them look as ugly as possible and then did a transition and went from ugly to hot. This show is just that on steroids. So it's a very flawed show. Sexy Beast is a flawed show. However, it is hella entertaining. I'm not gonna lie. It's hella entertaining and I always want to see what the people look like because it does actually uh, subvert my expectations. I don't know what the person's gonna look like underneath. Now today we're gonna be taking a look at one of the episodes. For season one they only made six episodes as far as I know and instead of looking at the first episode I think we're gonna take a look at the last episode because um, I'm sure that a lot of other people are catching on to the sexy beast train right now and I don't want to do the exact same thing so I'd like to go for the last person. Before we start the video though you see that S? You know what it stands for? Sombrero. I don't have a sombrero. This is a hat. Just for trying, you need to subscribe. So <laughs> Also, while you're at it, do follow me at 16leo underscore on Instagram. That way you can actually give me ideas. This idea was given to me by like 20 people and I really cannot thank you enough for it because I do like the show. All right, you can see I dressed up today for this episode. I am ready for sexy beasts. I also hate that name. Like I know that sex sells and you have to have like sexy people in the title, but could you just call them beasts or like sensual beasts or like prosthetically amicable beasts? Beast holes. You know what? Sexy Beast is good. All right, so this is episode six of season one. Kalichi the Rooster. I think I'm saying that wrong. Welcome to the strangest blind date ever. So again, I honestly do love the concept. And I got to say to the people who do prosthetics on the show. Wow, what? an insane amount of work that goes into this. I wish they would be credited more because they are absolutely killing it. However, like I said, the people sometimes on the show, they need to get more realistic contestants. I wish they got John, who is 42 from the pub, who can't find love, bro. I wish they got him instead of Danny, 22. I'm a millionaire, I just haven't found the right one. All the reveals are too, it's too good looking. Stop. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Kalechik. A pharmacy student from Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay, this costume is freaking me the fuck out. First of all, he's got two testicles hanging out below. And secondly, they put the beak below his mouth? The beak is the mouth, bro. This dude looks like he's angry and also happy at the same time. This is a weird prosthetic. So let's meet the three ladies hoping to ravish the rooster. First up, meet Lily, a model and former scientist from London, England. 
You see what I mean? She's a model and former scientist. Guess how hot she was. She left her science job to be a model. They're like, scientifically speaking, your face is a 10. And then she just left. Come on. We need to get Martha from the kitchen who was too afraid to leave because she has too much anxiety. But she's like, hey, if you dress me up as a giraffe, then maybe I will uh, be on Sexy Beast. But she's not a model, but she looks good. But she finds love with John from the pub. pub. Bar pub? And he's 42 and he's looking for love, bro. That's what we need. We need two people, real people, not this. I really want someone just to get to know me and want to be with Lily rather than just a pretty face. Imagine having that as your gripe. Oh, men just keep judging me. They're like, you're so beautiful. And I'm like, oh, oh. Just get off me, bro. Really? I'm sorry, but there's people out there who is just struggling because they don't look like that. So believe it or not, this will be my first date in over two years. You know she's good looking when they cover your face that much. They didn't even want to show any of her features. They were like, yep. Yeah. Okay, Cassie, I see. I see what's happening here. So what's Cassie hopping? Uh, I'm sorry, hoping to get out of this experience. Okay, alright, okay, I wasn't saying- I wasn't gonna say anything. I wasn't gonna say anything, but this happens every time. The narrator needs to shut the f up. Shut the f up. I don't know why they paid you to even make these jokes. The series is flawed enough without you. With you, though, it goes from like a 6 to a 4. J just like that, just by you being there, people leave. Your existence makes people want to not be around. <laughs> Please don't meme that. I'd ideally like someone who is not complete and utter moron <laughs> and does not cheat. Okay, there's some there's some uh, backstory here that none of us are aware of. I like a guy who's not a fucking moron and doesn't cheat. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, duly noted. Shoot for the stars, Martha. I like it. Holy shit, her name's actually Martha? We need to get Martha from the kitchen who was too afraid to leave because she has too much anxiety. I, I think I made a joke about a Martha just now. How tall are you? 60. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Okay, all right. Listen, I'm sorry, bro. But this, is, this is what I mean. Oh, this is a show that doesn't talk about judging people at all. We're not judging people. How tall are you? 6'3". Oh, Jesus Christ, thank God. Thank the Lord. The show is so fucking stupid. It's ridiculous how they, like, abandon their whole premise within the first five minutes of the show. Stick to it. Get a dude who's 5'4". Get a girl who's not conventionally attractive. Do you know how much more I would watch the show and champion it? Ah, this annoys me to no end. You look like a lion. Lion, chicken, turkey. Lion, chicken, turkey. You know what? That sounds like a sandwich. Oh, God. <laughs> I gotta get a lion chicken turkey, please. <laughs> Damn, she cannot flirt to save her life. It's always weird um, because, again, conventionally and stereotypically speaking, the guy has to approach the girl and has to come up with some smooth, hey shorty, how you doing? I would like to get in between those reindeer tusks. No, they're not tusks, but I don't know the other word for them. So, horns? Well, I'm a little horny myself. Ah, ha, ha, ha. This is why I don't go on dates. What I'm trying to say is that, conventionally speaking, the girls don't have to come up with the pickup lines or come up with a conversation, but in this episode, they do. So, so it's always different to see their approach to the game because it's different to men's. It really is. What else do you do in your spare time other than sport? I actually play video games a lot. I like this dude, man. I like Kehlani. I, don't, I forgot his name. I, I think he's dope, man. He seems to be very engaging into the people. He's acknowledging them and actually listening. That's pretty good. He's a good dude. I hope uh, Kehlani over here does well. Mostly first person shooters. Like, I've played like Call of Duty, <laughs> <or> Halo. <Okay. laughs> A first person shooter. Yeah, first person shooter. Just that's what you do. It's called a woo, run. It's always gonna be tough explaining gaming to uh, people who don't understand gaming. It's like, why? Why you like playing games? Because it's fun. That's why. Come on. Why you like eating burritos at 3 a.m. without other people knowing? Huh? Because it's tasty. It shocked me a lot that she told me she hadn't been a date in two years. It was. Uh, I don't want to say a red flag, but. I mean, it was a red flag. Is it? Well, okay, if you don't count lockdown, then it's different. But, like, I don't know if she's counting lockdown. Because if that's a two-year thing, then one year's already taken if you couldn't leave the house. Who are you going to go on a date with? Your parents? That's not cool. Huh? No, she didn't, maybe just didn't want to go on a date. There's nothing wrong with that. He was so lovely. He was really, like, welcoming. We didn't have any awkward silences. I'd be gutted if he didn't choose me. Don't you just love how people from the UK talk? I'd be absolutely gutted if he didn't choose me. I'd be absolutely ramwashed. I'd be slippity slopped. I'd be rocked in the knockers. I mean the knickers. I just like the way they say things. I wish I had like my own phrases. In NZ, the only phrase that people really know is like you're an egg, which is not even a good thing. So after the initial date with the, the three people, usually the contestant gets to choose one person uh, just based off of that first date that they don't 
don't want to date and after he chooses them they reveal themselves to him and he can see whether he lost out or not so yes for the show supposedly not being superficial they have a whole moment dedicated to being like this is how i look now you're gonna lose out hope you like that bitch i just i had such high hopes for the show that's all i'm saying lily we had a great conversation However, I don't know if this is more of a romantic connection or a friendship connection. Oh man, imagine her getting friend zone. Wouldn't that be the ultimate karma? Because she was the one who's like, oh, all these boys fancy me, but I'm just like, I'm gonna be a friend and nothing more. Good one, Kaylichi. Cassie, I love that you're super intelligent. However, I don't know if we really were on the same vibe. That wasn't even a thing, bro. <laughs> he just might as well have said, uh, I think you're super intelligent, but you haven't been on a date in two years. And that turns me off somehow. My name's K Kron, the Mayron. And uh, yeah, I hate people who haven't been dating. Martha, we had an awesome date as well. It was super natural, super easygoing. And I love that you're spontaneous like I am. However, I don't know if you're looking for a deeper connection. I love how in the first episode, they get the people to be like, this is what you have to do. You have to say one thing nice and one thing you hate about them. He could have went on the perfect date. She could have dropped down and uh, started licking those two things that he has on his face. Really, I liked you, but I thought it was a little too forward for the first date. Because it's reality TV and you have to build up the tension somehow. I made a decision and unfortunately I have to let someone go. I'm pretty sure he's letting Frog Lady go. Cassie, sorry. Her first date in two years, and she's been chucked by a chicken. Okay, one, shut the hell up, narrator. Two, damn. Cassie, she just, all she did was not go out on a date. And now you're depriving her of going on another date for the next two years. Man, why you do this to Cassie? She seemed nice. Yeah, I'm 100% back in the dating game. And Prince Charming, if you're out there, nice. I'm, waiting. I'm waiting to be kissed. Oh. So now comes the big reveal, and Cassie's gonna, like, do a little dance, and then they're gonna, like... <laughs> Where was all that hair hiding? That's nice. I mean, I guess it didn't work. And uh, if there's no hard feelings, that's the best outcome. Because you have to. Like, you can't not move on with the show. So he had to do something. There's nothing wrong with it. Hi, guys. Hello. How are you? How are you? How are you doing? Hi. Helping them get to grips with the grape, or to just get drunk, is Tim. Tim is who they need on the show. This is what they need. Tim. <laughs> If Tim came on the show and dressed up as something, then it would subvert everyone's expectations. Oh, I'm Tim, I'm uh, playing a little unicorn, and uh, when he takes off the unicorn horn, I got a little chrome dome, I'm, you know, I'm just a guy who's 38 looking for love. Beautiful. Gherkin. That like, like a croissant? No. That's a serious question. <laughs> okay, so like a gherkin, oh, this is gonna sound really sexy. It's like a long green What's wrong bumpy with that? thing. Oh, unless you're talking about Shrek, it's not sexy. And if it's uh, sex with Shrek, it's Shrexy. So you need, a, you need to get your facts straight. Long pickle, that's a Shrek sex toy, a Shrek's toy. I know these things. I'm a Shrek's expert, Shrek's butt. Queen. Everybody. Else. I can do a better bird noise than that. I that's probably the only feasible time you can bring out a bird noise and impress someone in 2021 is if they are also dressed as a type of bird. Uh, I did not think that she was going to do that. Less so the fact that she's dressed up as a reindeer or some other animal that I'm not aware of. But hell yeah. Okay, that was uh, a weird, weird session right there. Good date. I would give it a 5 out of 10 if I was him, but I'm not. Oh, hello. <laughs> Dude, did he say he was 6'3"? How tall is this girl? Is she 6'2"? What am I eating that is not making me 6'8"? How is everyone that tall? I feel so short now. Okay, good for them. As they go off-roading with instructor Ashley. Can we have a couple doodle doo to, um... This, again, again, Ashley, the man, the Mashley. This guy needs to be on the show with Tim. They need some real people. Ashley already funnier and has more personality than these two put together. You sure oh, that's perfect? Oh, yeah. Okay. We're going up. Okay. We're going up. All right. So this is not a date. This is just a way to not even smartly disclose a sponsor by, what, Land Rover, Range Rover? I'm pretty sure that's the sponsor of uh, this episode. That is a very, very poor and cheap product placement in an otherwise, well, shitty show, honestly. They might as well have a Coke tasting contest. Why did the chicken cross the road? Well, in this case, it's because we told him to for this cheap visual gag. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually sue you. I'm gonna sue you for just a living. Your existence is pain. Narrator, I'm talking to you. There's a reason nobody sees your face because if I did, I would hunt you down and give you a lawsuit for $36.28 for defamation of my livelihood, okay? You need to go back to the hole in which you came from, okay? I will fight you, YouTuber vs. Narrator, right now. I don't know your name, but I could. Your name's Craig. Craig, fight me. Okay, so I I guess the dates are over now. He says that he had a really good time. He doesn't know how he's gonna pick, but he probably already picked in his head. So I guess what he's gonna do now is choose one. The thing that I don't like about the series is that after he picks one, he reveals himself, and then the person who doesn't get picked reveals themselves, and then the person who does reveals themselves. I think that's a weird way of doing it. Like if I had to do the show, I would reveal the person who didn't get picked to him and then reveal the two who did at the same time. That that would be cool if they both took their masks off, but hey, I'm not the one running the show. You guys are the one with the crazy narrator and some amazing contestants who totally need the help. I don't know why I woke up and chose violence today. I have no idea. Will he heed Martha's sultry bird call? Oh, yeah. Or has the witch got him under her spell? I think he's going with the reindeer personally. I'm pretty sure he's going with the reindeer. My sexy beast is... Martha. Which one is she? The deer's done it. She did it. Ah, right, right, I got it. Maybe this experience has taught me that, yeah, there needs to be that bit extra to create a spark. What, what extra? Like physical attraction? You know, for a scientist, you're pretty dumb. This is the real Kalechi. I'm gonna take a guess. Uh, white dude, mid to late 20s, brownish hair. That's what I'm going for. Wow. Uh, can we just rewind? A uh, black dude, uh, mid to late 20s, wears a hat like Neo. Wow. This is cool. I did not expect that. The only part that I like is the prosthetics are done so well. It is almost impossible to tell. And kudos once again to the people who do prosthetics. Amazing work, you guys. Let's dewart Lily the Witch. I'll polish my broomstick. <laughs> Oh my god. Hey. Damn, what well, is everyone here like six foot eight? Why were they so tall? The girl was like pretty borderline taller than him. <sighs> god, I gotta start wearing Doc Martens on my Doc Martens now. Will a romantic future flourish? <sighs> I just noticed something. Did they paint her hands black to reverse this? Black deal. I mean, I guess, I guess it's okay. It's just a very new concept to me. I didn't, I didn't expect it. I guess I did think that she was, uh, uh, wow. Slightly a war crime, but still pretty cute. Wow. Hello. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I mean, you know, they're both very handsome couple right there. That's the problem that I have with the show is that these two could have met in a bar and like hit it off. Like you need Tim and Ashley to actually be on the show, but they do live on opposite ends of the world. Don't know how that's going to work. It's not sexy beasts after the show ends. It's just two normal people who are above attractive. Cool. And that is how the show ends. Um, a great result for Kehlani and his girlfriend, Ribbidibdibdabla. Don't know her name, so that's what her name is. Like I said, On the Surface, Sexy Beast is a great show with a great premise. Two people who have to let their personalities lead the way. However, there are a lot of things that get in the show's own way of itself. The narrator being one, and the fact that they sort of premeditate everybody's looks on the show. I would genuinely like to see a show in which they don't know what the result is. I know that you have to do it for television, I get that, but it would be better to take a little more off a chance because this show is not really as original as it seems once you understand the premise of the fact that every time the winner chooses someone he's gonna be happy or she's gonna be happy and everybody on the show is attractive enough that they won't feel bad or they won't feel like they missed out, which seems kind of slimy, honestly. And I didn't expect the show to be slimy because the whole point of it was the anti-slime. So it turns out the show is more superficial than a show that actually is just based off of looks, which kind of sucks. But that is my assessment of the show Sexy Beasts. If they have season two and you like this, then let me know down below because I would like to do season two. I think I'm really enjoying the show for better or for worse. And um, if you guys like my commentary on it, then let me know. And I will definitely do another one if they do season two. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I shall see you here. Love and peace and fluffs. Take it away, my buddy. Man, dogs don't even want to be your friend. You got the whole hood of dogs 
wanting to bark on your ass. She ain't even got an ass, she did a dash and bit a lash.